Swayam Prabha Digital India Educated India Welcome to lecture number 16 of the subject business law Today we are going to discuss the topic Negotiable Instrument Act 1881 Part 1. I am Dr. Rama Bansal working as assistant professor at Arya College Ludhiana. This is DTH Swayam Prabha MHRD New Delhi sponsored project. Today we will cover the topics meaning of negotiable instrument, characteristics of a negotiable instrument presumptions as to negotiable instruments types of negotiable instruments in which we will cover promissory note bill of exchange check and at last we will cover crossing of checks so let's start with the meaning of the negotiable instruments or and to uh, and introduction to the act so the law which is known as negotiable instrument act 1881 relates with the negotiable instruments in india the act came into force on 1st march 1881 and this act extends to whole of india including the state of jammu and kashmir the act which is known as negotiable instrument act 1881 contains total 147 section in which there are different definitions different provisions to the operation of the negotiable instruments to work out in india in basically the uh, negotiable instrument act contains three type of negotiable instruments that are promissory notes bill of exchange and checks but apart from this all other instruments which have the features of negotiability can also be treated under the provisions of negotiable instrument act 1881 so first of all let's know what is the meaning of the negotiable instrument so the section 13 subsection 1 of negotiable instrument act 1881 explains negotiable instrument as a negotiable instrument means a promissory note bill of exchange or check payable either to order or to bearer justice wills has also explained it as one the property in which is acquired by any one who takes it bona fide and for value not withstanding any defect of title in the person from whom he took it in simple words if we want to know the meaning of the negotiable instruments we can read it like negotiable instrument is one which when transferred by delivery or by endorsement and delivery passes to the transferee a good title to payment irrespective of the title of the transferer provided that transferee is a bona fide holder for value without notice of any defect in the title of the transferer that means when a negotiable instrument is delivered or is passed to the transferee he or she has the same rights he or she has the good title to the payment as the transferer has when two conditions are being satisfied we can say that this instrument is a negotiable instrument so let's read those uh, those two conditions that it is in a form which is capable of being used by the holder for the time being in his own name that means negotiable instrument is that instrument which can be used by the holder in his own name and this is transferable like cash by delivery this is the main feature of any negotiable instrument that means it is readily transfer, uh, transferable like we can transfer the cash by delivery to other person there are a few characteristics of a negotiable instrument which makes it negotiable let's read them the first one is the property the property in the negotiable instrument means 
the complete right of ownership and not merely a right of possession that means if only possession is being given let's say i have given you the check to just keep with yourself so this is not a this this doesn't make the check negotiable negotiability means when the with the possession of the instrument the right of ownership are also being transferred property in a negotiable instruments can be transferred without any formality means it can be transferred in as it is form as it was before the transfer that means negotiable instrument is the transfer of the uh, right of ownership to the transferee by the transferor in case of a bearer instrument the property passes by mere delivery we will read what the, what is the meaning of bearer in the in in uh, further slides here to know only that in case of a bearer instrument only when the uh, instrument is being transferred that means it is known as the that it, it the ownership has been transferred in case of an order instrument endorsement and delivery are required for the transfer of property in it means in case of bearer instrument only uh, delivery of instrument is required whereas in case of the order instrument with the delivery endorsement is also the imposing condition the second characteristics of a negotiable instrument is the negotiability the property in negotiable instrument is should be freely transferred from with uh, from one person to another means without any condition uh, the the property with the transferor should be transferred should be negotiated to the transferee without any condition it should be freely transferable third one is the good title a holder in due course gets a good title even if the transferor had the defective title that means in some cases if the transferor has the defective title of the ownership of the goods but the holder in due course will definitely have the true title now what is the meaning of holder in due course holder in due course means a person who is a bona fide transferee that means the person who has received the negotiable instrument in good faith and he he, uh, he would have the true title of the uh, or true title of the negotiable instrument there is a general rule that no one can give a better title than he himself has it does not apply to the negotiable instruments because in this case holder in due course would be having the better title than he uh, than the transferor himself has in case of the defective title of the transferor next characteristic is right to sue in own name in case of dishonor what is dishonor dishonor is when the actual performance is being not made when the actual payment is not made due to any reason that means the uh, the negotiable instrument has got dishonored so in case of dishonor the transferee has right to sue in his own name for recovery of the amount that means to whom the negotiable instrument is being transferred that person has the right to sue the um, the defaulting company for uh, for recovering of the amount at his own name because that person has the better title or that person has the true title of that particular negotiable instrument and it can be transferred as many times as the 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 person wants the parties involved wants till its maturity once the negotiable instruments got matured it cannot be transferred maturity means the day of payment the holder of the instrument need not to give any notice of transfer to the debtor that he is further endorsing the trans, uh, uh, endorsing the instrument or further he is giving this instrument to someone else there is no need of notice in case of negotiable instruments
देयर आर फ्यू प्रिजम्पन्स रिगार्डिंग द नेगोशियबल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स प्रिजम्पन्स मीन्स वेन एनी ट्रांजेक्शन इज मेड एनी ट्रांसफर और एनी एंडोर्समेंट इज बिंग मेड इन केस ऑफ नेगोशियबल इंस्ट्रूमेंट्स देयर आर अ फ्यू प्रिजम्पन्स इन द माइंड ऑफ द बोथ ऑफ द पार्टीज ट्रांसफर एंड द ट्रांसफरी दैट मीन्स इट इट मे बी रिगार्डिंग द कंसिड्रेशन मीन्स इट वुड अंडरस्टैंड दैट कंसिड्रेशन हैज बिन ऑलरेडी पेड फॉर द नेगोशियबल इंस्ट्रूमेंट or the uh, it is regarding the order of endorsement or it is regarding the reasonable time next point is prompt payment because in case of dishonor of the negotiable instrument the goodwill of the persons are at stake when the payment of the negotiable instrument is due and it is not being honored that means it is not being made on the specified period specified date that means the person who was responsible to make the payment his or her goodwill would be at stake so it can the the uh, the uh, goodwill at stake can ruin the credibility of the person of the party so it would create problem in business in future also it would just ruin the name of the parties involved so negotiable instruments deals with it has characteristics of prompt payment of negotiable instrument next point is in writing a negotiable instrument is only valid when it is in writing means there must be a certain uh, conditions there must be some formalities in the writing part of the negotiable instrument that must be completed only when it would be known as a valid negotiable instrument the last characteristic of negotiable instrument is the signature no negotiable instrument would be complete uh, unless it is being signed by the maker of the negotiable instrument that means maker is the person who makes the negotiable who draws the negotiable instrument that means there should be only the only the maker of the negotiable instrument has the authentic uh, authority to sign that so that means when a when a negotiable instrument is being signed by the maker of the instrument it would be known as the valid negotiable instruments so by now we have learned about the characteristics of the negotiable instruments now we come to the presumptions as to the negotiable instruments presumptions basically are never to be proved they are to be presumed uh, they uh, they are to be presumed by all the parties involved that these these things already exist in every negotiable instrument these are not to be specifically asked or specifically mentioned so let's discuss them the first one is the consideration so every negotiable instrument was made drawn accepted or endorsed for some consideration means when a um, negotiable instrument is being drawn so it is never been asked that whether the consideration was paid whether the consideration has been has made has been made so this question is being presumed that it automatically uh, uh, includes the consideration it automatically go for the consideration this is a major presumption uh, the parties can make when dealing in a negotiable instrument second presumption is regarding the date it is normally presumed that the date mentioned on the negotiable instrument is that date on which it was drawn that means the date mentioned in a negotiable instrument is that the date on which it was made it it has become valid time of acceptance every accepted bill of exchange is presumed to have been accepted within a reasonable time after its issue and before its maturity only in case of bill of exchange it is being sent for acceptance of the other party and it is being presumed that the it was sent and accepted within a reasonable time and this time was the uh, the acceptance time was after the issue of the instrument and it was before the maturity of that bill of exchange next presumption is regarding time of transfer 
every transfer of a negotiable instrument was made before its maturity as i have already covered that it the negotiable instruments once matured cannot be transferred further that means it is it is already pre, it is always presumed that once it is being uh, matured it would not be transferred next point is order of endorsements it is presumed that endorsements appearing upon a negotiable instruments were made in order in which they appear on the basic funda uh, regarding endorsement is when the uh, negotiable instrument is being endorsed further it is being mentioned on the face of that negotiable instrument so the order of the uh, writing of those endorsement would presume that this is a order in which they were endorsed let's say it was first endorsed to mr a then mr b then mr c so this order would be mentioned on the face of the uh, of the negotiable instrument and this is the order in which they appear next is the stamp it is presumed that a lost promissory note bill of exchange or check was duly stamped because without the stamp of uh, uh, without the valid stamp uh, any negotiable instrument could not be recognized as valid neg negotiable instrument so it is normally presumed that it have the uh, duly uh, the it, uh, it has the stamp holder in due course it is presumed that holder of a negotiable instrument is the holder in due course that means i have already explained holder in due course can have the better title than the original owner of the uh, negotiable instrument every holder is presumed to have paid consideration and taken it in good faith because uh, holder in due course has taken a negotiable instrument in the good faith so it is always being presumed that he has the better title than the drawer himself proof of protest in case of dishonor of the instrument the court shall on proof of protest presume that fact uh, the fact of dishonor unless and until such fact is disproved so basically these presumptions are there and these are being presumed by the parties involved in it uh, but any of the presumption can be rebutted by evidence to the contrary so that means when any contract regarding the any agreement regarding the negotiable instruments is being made it is being presumed that all the conditions mentioned all the condition discussed above are present in the negotiable instruments now we come to the next topic that is the type of the negotiable instruments generally there are three type of negotiable instruments which are being covered under the negotiable instrument act 1881 one is the promissory note second is the bill of exchange and third is the checks we will discuss all these three in detail in further slides so let's start with the first one that is the promissory note promissory note is defined under section 4 of negotiable instrument act which says that promissory note uh, is what it is an instrument in writing containing an unconditional undertaking signed by the maker to pay a certain sum of money only to or to the order of a certain person or to the bearer of the instrument so this is a very defined definition given under section 4 so let's discuss this definition in detail also this is uh, an instrument in writing that means the this line this these words shows that the promissory note should be in writing containing an unconditional undertaking that means the negotiable instrument must contain an unconditional undertaking there should not be any condition involved in it it must be signed by the maker that means the the promissory note must be signed by the maker of that instrument to pay a certain sum of money so here the signatures should be regarding uh, the, uh, regarding to pay a certain sum of money uh, to whom that is only to or to order of a certain person or to the bearer of the instrument bearer here means the holder of the instrument so here next we discuss about the parties of the negotiable instrument parties of the promissory notes 
the person who promises to pay is called the maker of the promissory note and the person to whom payment is to be made is called the payee of the promissory note there are a few examples like first example is i promise to pay b or order rupees 500 so this is the uh, this is the valid wording of the promissory note that is i promise to pay b or order or order means the person to whom it would be endorsed rupees 500 i acknowledge myself to be indebted to be in uh, rupees 1000 to be paid on demand for value received this is again a valid example of the valid promissory note now there are a few essentials of a promissory note one it must be in writing so as the basic feature of the negotiable instrument that every negoti negotiable instrument should be in writing this is again the feature of the promissory note where verbal promise to do or will not be a promissory note mean in absence of writing it would not be a valid promissory note it may be noted on any paper or on book or any substitute for paper that means there is no set a uh, paper uh, paper type on which it is to be mentioned it may be on book it may be on paper or any substitute for the paper substitute for paper includes any kind of printing any kind of photography or the lithography the second essential is the promise to pay must be expressed that means there must be the express contract express agreement to pay for the specified money a mere acknowledgement of debt that means i am just saying that i have taken this much amount from other does not make any kind of promissory note a mere acknowledgement of debt without express promise to pay is not a promissory note that means in every promissory note there must be acknowledgement of debt or with that acknowledgement there must be a promise to pay to that promissory note a mere implied promise will not be a promissory note let's see the example i have borrowed rupees 1000 from mr x and i am accountable to him for the same does not include any undertaking or promise to pay because in this example there is an acknowledgement that i have borrowed rupees 1000 from mr x and i am accountable to him but there is no promise that i would pay rupees 1000 to mr x so in absence of that promise this cannot be said that this is a valid promissory note the third essential is the promise to pay must be unconditional that means when any person is making the promise to other person to pay a specified amount it should not be conditional the promise to pay must not depend upon the happening of any contingency unconditional promissory note is not negotiable and hence invalid so that means any Uh, any uh, promissory note which is depending upon the happening of a contingency would not make it valid like a promise to pay when able or as soon as possible is conditional and in these cases if these kind of words are being used these are not valid promissory notes the promise to pay does not become conditional if it is regarding a particular place or up or a specific time or on happening of an event which must happen so if it is regarding that the promissory note would be the payment for the money should be given at a particular place this is not uh, conditional on some specific time this is not conditional and if uh, even if there is an event included which must happen so all in these cases it would not be treated as the conditional promise so let's see the example a promise to pay a promise to pay rupees 500 seven days after the death of b is not conditional for it is certain that b will die though the exact time of his death is uncertain so b will definitely die uh, one uh, on on one day so when he will die a would pay rupees 500 seven days after his death so this is a valid promissory note a written promise to pay a sum of money within so many days after the marriage of the maker was not recognized as a promissory note because the maker may never marry because the to get married or not to get married it may be certain or uh, it, it is totally uncertain event because 
a person to avoid the payment may not get married but as in the previous example the death is a certain event that means in case of a certain event this this would not be treated as a conditional promise but where the event is not certain means it's not a must happening event in that case it would not be a valid promissory note the next essential is it must be signed by the maker signature of the maker on the face of the note is very essential as we have read in the basic characteristics of a negotiable instrument that the maker should sign it so the sign on the face of the promissory note is the essential condition signing means writing one's name on some document or some paper signature it is not required that signature should be at the foot or any particular uh, place of the promissory note it may be a thumb mark initial or any other mark which is recognized by the negotiable instrument act 1881 but when the person is a literate person he can understand he can sign he can read he can write there the thumb mark would not be considered as a sufficient one the thumb mark would be considered valid only in case when the person is totally illiterate he don't he don't know how to read and write next is the maker must be certain the maker of the promissory note must be the definite one who has made it there must be some identity of the person which should be known to the other parties it must be shown on its face the person who is liable as a maker means the person who is going to make the payment in future it must be shown on the face of the promissory note sufficient indication about his identity should be there sufficient indication means the name of the person or the name of the company must be mentioned on the face of the promissory note and may it also be in the form of the designation like ceo or of company abc so this is also sufficient identification of the maker that means any kind of identity of the maker either in uh, either with his own name either with the name of the company or with the name of the with the designation of the maker must be mentioned on the face of the promissory note to make it a valid promissory note there must be two or there may be two or more makers of a promissory note means two persons can jointly make a promissory note let's see the example a note signed a or else b is not invalid it is good against a and b but b would become liable only on default by a that means when the two persons assign the same promissory note it is always considered valid but the first prime responsibility of of payment would be of the first person and in case of default by the first party then the second party would be liable to pay for the same the next essential is promise must be to pay a certain sum means the payment which is to be made in future that must be certain and definite the promised must be to pay a certain sum and nothing else that means let's see the example a promised to pay rupees 2000 and such other sums as may be do would not make a, prom a promissory note valid because the amount promised is uncertain means where the total amount is uncertain or a part of the total is uncertain it would it, it would not make a note a valid promissory note as in this case as in this example a has promised to pay rupees 2000 and other sums so other sums is a totally vague term it is totally uncertain term so where the terms are not certain not definite it would not be a valid promissory note the promise should be to pay money and money only that means anything else in lieu of money would not make a note as a valid promissory note the medium of payment should be money and only money it should not include any kind of bonds any kind of bills or any other article at the uh, in lieu of money let's see the example an instrument signed by a saying i promise to pay rupees 500 and to deliver to him my black horse on 1st january so this is to this is not a valid promissory note because in this case promise is not to pay money only but to do something else also apart from that 
here here one party is saying that he will give rupees 500 as well as the black horse so this there is something else involved except the money in the agreement so this something else will make the promissory note invalid so that means the promise should be to pay money and nothing else the next point is the pay must be certain pay is a person to whom the promise is to be made that that means the person who is going to receive the money should be the certain person and that person should be capable of being received the payment the pay should be certain on the face as already being mentioned but it should be mentioned on the face of the instrument at the time of the execution of the instrument and same as as in the case of the payer the drawer the maker the name the designation or the name of the company can be uh, valid uh, valid points valid names on the face of the promissory note to make it a valid instrument a promissory note payable to several individuals can never be considered as a valid instrument because if there is an involvement of several receivers then to whom the payment was made is not clear it makes the terms of the promissory note totally uncertain so it is not a valid instrument the maker and the person who is to receive the payment cannot be the one and the same person that means the person who is making the promise and the person to whom promises being made to pay a certain sum of amount cannot be the same they should be two different persons but in case of a bank note or a currency note they are not the promissory note because in in these cases both of them are treated as money itself next feature is the other formalities other formalities like number place date attestation etc are usually found in the promissory note but they are not essential in law basically these things are being added to make it more convenient and to uh, perform it in a desired manner these are not essential to the validity of a promissory note but a promissory note must be properly stamped under the indian stamp act that means under the indian stamp act if any specified authenticated stamp is required without that stamp any promissory note cannot be considered as a valid promissory note it may be payable on demand or after a definite period of time that means where no time is mentioned on the promissory note it is payable on demand payable on demand means the time the when when the pay wants to have the payment he can show it to the maker next this is a specimen form of the promissory note we can see here it is very clear that the place is mentioned on the top that is patiala the date is mentioned 15th july 2002 that means it is a date on which it was being created it was being uh, framed so the wording on demand i promise to pay mr x y or order rupees 2000 with interest at 8% per annum for value received that means here is a uh, here one promiser is making the promise to pay rupees 2000 mr to mr xy or on the order of mr xy and the amount is there the, the 2000 rupees which is the requirement that the it should be only in the monetary form that is present there and at last the stamp uh, uh, the place for stamp is there that means all the essential things that means a, a specified place the date on which it is being made the amount is certain the parties are certain to whom the payment is being made that is certain and stamp and signature everything is being uh, mentioned in this specimen of a promissory note so if all these things are available in any promissory note it makes it as a valid promissory note so now let's let's uh, let's move to the second type of the negotiable instrument that is the bill of exchange section 5 of negotiable instrument act 1881 defines the bill of exchange what is bill of exchange an instrument in writing containing an unconditional order signed by the maker directing a certain person to pay a certain sum of money 
only to or to order of a certain person or to the bearer of the instrument is known as bill of exchange more or less the features of bill of exchange defined in section 5 are similar to the features of the promissory note defined in section 4 of negotiable instrument act here also it should be in writing there should be unconditional order it must be signed by the maker <clears throat> it must be a certain person to whom the payment is to be made and the certain amount should be there and it would be paid only to the certain person or on the orders of a certain person or to the bearer means holder of the instrument so sometimes bill of exchange is also known as the draft there are few parties involved in the bill of exchange drawer the person who draws the bill that is known as drawee drawer drawee second party on whom the bill is being drawn is known as drawee and third party is the payee at last to whom the payment is being made for that particular bill is known as payee in few cases uh, drawee or payee can be the same person but if the bill of exchange has been endorsed or been exchanged further so this is being uh, the, these two parties will be different there are a few essentials of a bill of exchange the first essential is it must be in writing as every negotiable instrument requires to be in writing so this is again the important feature of this it must contain an unconditional order to pay as in case of the promissory note any condition attached to the payment of the uh, bill of exchange will make it invalid so any uh, condition should not be attached with the payment of the bill of exchange it must be signed by the drawer drawer is the person who draws the bill so the signature of the drawer must be put on the face of bill of exchange there must be three parties to the instrument and parties must be certain parties must be certain means to whom the payment would be made the, the person who is drawing the bill and and on whom the uh, bill is being drawn must be the certain one the order must be to pay a certain sum of money that means if it includes a certain sum of money that means it is not the definite term it is not a clear term what is the meaning of certain sum of money that means the amount which is to be paid must be clearly mentioned in the bill of exchange the instrument must contain an order to pay money or money only that means any kind of article any kind of uh, any kind of uh, bonds etc in lieu of that money if it is being mentioned in the terms of the bill of exchange will not be a valid bill of exchange it must comply with the formalities as regards date consideration and stamp etc so all these features will make a bill of exchange a valid bill of exchange so this is a specimen form of bill of exchange the place chandigarh is being mentioned may 31 2009 the date on which the bill is being drawn 3 months after date pay to xy or order the sum of rupees 10000 for value received so here to messrs pq chowk sadar merit it it is the person to whom to uh, on whom the bill is being drawn it is being uh, uh, there is a space for signature there is a space for stamp a place is being mentioned date is being mentioned amount is certain and the time is also being certain that means all the essentials which we have read in the previous slide are mentioned uh, mentioned here so the presence of all those essentials make it a valid bill of exchange so there is a difference between the promissory note and bill of exchange otherwise mo uh, mostly both these looks like the same the features are almost the same but still there are a few differences which clearly demarks them that these two are the different type of negotiable instruments let's read them the first difference of uh, between difference between promissory note and bill of exchange is the number of parties in the promissory note there are two parties involved whereas in the bill of exchange there are three parties drawer drawee and payee next difference is the nature of payment promissory note is an unconditional promise to pay 
here the maker of the promissory note promised to pay that i will i will i am promising to pay this much of amount but in bill of exchange it is not a promise it is unconditional order to pay so there is a difference that means promissory note is an unconditional promise whereas bill of exchange is an unconditional order acceptance promissory note doesn't require any kind of acceptance once it is being written it is considered as accepted but in case of bill of exchange it is being sent for acceptance to the drawee before it is presented for payment next point of difference is the liability liability of maker is primary and absolute that means the liability to pay for a promissory note is totally of the maker but in case of bill of exchange liability of drawer is secondary and conditional next is notice of dishonor notice of dishonor to the maker is not necessary as uh, if in case the promissory note got dishonor so in that case any kind of notice to the maker of the promissory note is not necessary to send but in case of bill of exchange notice must be given to all the persons who are liable to pay for that bill of exchange next difference is the maker's position in case of promissory note the maker stands in immediate relationship with the payee that means there are two parties one is the maker second one is the payee so there is a very immediate relationship between the maker and the payee in case of promissory note but in case of bill of exchange the drawer stands in immediate relationship with the acceptor and not with the pay because in this bill of exchange the pay may be some other person so in that case the drawer has the immediate relationship with the acceptor but the but drawer is not immediately related with the pay next is nature of acceptance the promissory note it can never be conditional promissory note can never be conditional but bill of exchange can be accepted conditionally but this, there are few uh, there there are there are only few cases about that uh, next is the copies a promissory note cannot be drawn in sets but bill of exchange is drawn in sets payable to bearer promissory note cannot be made payable to the bearer but it can be so drawn provided it is not payable to bearer on demand means this must be mentioned on the bill of exchange payable to maker the maker cannot pay to himself means there must be at least two parties one maker another one should be the pay to whom the maker can pay for the promissory note but in case of bill of exchange the drawer and the pay may be the same person next difference is protest no such protest is required in case of promissory note but in case of bill of exchange for foreign bills must be protested for dishonor when such protest is required by the law of the place where they were drawn next and last is the applicability of certain provisions provisions like acceptance acceptance for honor are not applicable to the promissory notes but in case of bill of exchange these provisions are the must they they are applicable in case of bill of exchange so all these points shows that there is a difference between the promissory note and the bill of exchange now we come to the third negotiable instrument that is the check section 6 of negotiable instrument act 1881 defines the meaning of the check a check as a bill of exchange drawn on a specified banker and not expressed to be payable otherwise than on demand and it includes the electronic image of a truncated check and a check in the electronic form so it is a little different uh, from the bill of exchange so uh, and the promissory note here the um, it is basically in, uh, it it basically involves a electronic image of a truncated check and the check in a electronic form so what is the meaning of check in electronic form it means a check which contains the exact mirror image of paper check and is and is generated in writing and signed in a secure system ensuring the minimum safety standards with the use of the digital signatures 
a truncated check i have used this term what is the meaning of a truncated check it means a check which is truncated during the course of a clearing cycle either by the clearing house or by the bank whether paying or receiving payment immediately on generation of an electronic image for the transmission substituting the further physical movement of the check in writing so a check means when a person who has the funds in the hands of the bank withdraws the same or some part of it so it, the whole process includes the functioning of the check the check is a kind of bill of exchange it is it it has almost the same features of the bill of exchange but it has two additional qualifications one it is always drawn on a specified banker which was not valid in case of bill of exchange it is always payable on demand without any days of grace in bill of exchange 3 days are being given for payment as days of grace but in case of check no such days of grace are allowed there are a few features of a check which make it which makes it valid it must be drawn in accordance with the requirements of section 5 of the act we have already read the definition given under section 5 so all the features must be present in a check that means it must be drawn according to the requirements according to the provisions of section 5 mentioned there it must be signed by the maker so the signatures are always the must in case of any negotiable instrument so uh, like in other negotiable instruments the sign of the makers are must in case of check it must con contain an unconditional order for the payment of a certain sum of money that means the the amount to be paid must be mentioned there it must also specify the banker upon whom it is drawn so this is a additional condition which separates the check from the bill of exchange that in case of bill of exchange the banker is not required but in case of check any specified banker is required and it must be mentioned on the face of the check that upon whom it is being drawn check must be addressed by one person to another next checks are written on printed form supplied by the banks on their depositors every bank uh, whether private or public have their printed forms of the checks or these are being supplied by the bank the format will be the same but the 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 uh, presentation mode of the the presenting area the presenting way of the bank of uh, regarding the check may be different a check is not invalid by the reason it is post dated that means every check can and be a post dated check what is a post dated check uh, let's say today is uh, let's say today is 1st january so uh, if i um, draw the check today for 10th january that means it is a post dated the date is yet to come that means this is a post dated check and this is a totally valid uh, valid check this is a format of a check form of check the following is a usual form of a check serial number is mentioned date is mentioned central bank of india the mall patiala pay or bearer to whom it is to be paid how much rupees is to be paid what is the account number with this there is always a um, uh, electronic image present on the face of the check so now let's discuss the difference between the check and bill of exchange the first point of difference between check and bill of exchange is the drawy it is always drawn on a bank or a banker check is always drawn on a banker or on a bank but bill of exchange can be drawn only on the individual persons including a banker next is the acceptance check does not require any acceptance once it's drawn it is the process is complete but the bill of exchange it must be accepted before the drawy can be made liable upon it the payment it is payable immediately on demand without any days of grace in bill of exchange there are 3 days of grace unless it is payable on demand which is missing in case of check the check on the date mentioned would be liable to pay there are no grace days available in case of check crossing a check may be cross check but the bill of exchange doesn't include any such provision notice of dishonor 
notice of dishonor is not necessary in case of check but in case of bill of exchange it is necessary to give a notice of dishonor in order to make the drawer of a bill liable next difference is payable to bearer on demand check can be drawn payable to bearer on demand but a bill of exchange cannot be so drawn stamp in case of check there is no requirement of the stamp there is the just the signatures of the maker which are sufficient but in case of bill of exchange it must be uh, stamped by the authorized person countermanding payment it may be revoked by countermanded of payment the notice of customer's death or insolvency automatically require the bank not to make payment for the check but the bank should receive such information before the payment of the check but in case of bill of exchange it cannot be countermanded so next point is noting and protesting it is not noted or protested for dishonor and is generally inland but in case of bill of exchange there can be noting and protesting under section 99 and 100 of negotiable instrument act 1881 in order to obtain the proof that a bill of exchange was dishonored which is missing in case of check presentment the drawer of the check is not discharged by failure of the holder to present in due time if the drawer does not present it um, sorry if the drawee uh, does not present it the payment to whom is to be made it does not present the check well in time it would not discharge the drawer from his liability but in case of bill of exchange it should be duly presented for the payment otherwise the drawer would be discharged from the liability protection a banker is given statutory protection with regard to payment of check but in case of bill of exchange no such protection is being provided so by now we have discussed the difference between the check and the bill of exchange now let's discuss the types of the checks the checks can be of two types out of those the first type is the bearer check what are the bearer check bearer checks are those checks which are paid over the counter of the bank that means the bearer check in uh, the bearer word says that the holder is the true owner of that particular negotiable instrument means in case i have lost my check the person who will found it would be the owner of the check and can have the payment of that particular check so the bearer check need not to be put through a bank account means it is paid at the counter of the bank means let's say if i found some missing check of rupees 10000 i went to a bank and i asked uh, and and i present the check for payment if it is a bearer check i would be paid rupees 10000 on the counter of the bank it need not to be go through the bank account if the bearer check goes to the wrong hands the holder in due course will get a good title in the check holder in due course would be the person who would find the check wrong uh, who will who would find the uh, lost check that person would uh, have the good title of the check and he would be allowed to have payment for that particular check bearer checks are liable to great risk in the course of circulation means because it has a loss of uh, it uh, sorry the, the, it it has a chances of loss of the check so when the check is lost it goes to the wrong hands the drawer of the check can have the um, have the loss in form of the payment to the undesired parties the finder or thief can get it in cash in the bank that means they the the finder of the lost check or the thief of of the loss check can have the payment on the over the counter of the bank so the bearer checks are not considered as the safest form of check second type of check is the crossed check so with a view to avoid the risks of the bearer check the risk of theft the risk of loss so the for the protection of the owner of a check the crossing of check system was introduced so what is a crossing crossing is basically a direction to the banker not to pay the check over the counter but to pay the check only to a particular bank account let's say i have lost my check but if it is being found by someone else and is presented to bank for payment so it would be 
transferred to the account number which is being mentioned on the um, uh, which is being mentioned on the check crossed check it would not be paid over the counter through crossing it can be easily detected that in whose account the money is being received because the cross checks are to be gone through by the particular bank account and to which account it is being posted it can be clearly uh, found out so crossing does not affect the negotiability or transferability of a check it can be easily transferred further so when we talk about the crossing there are different modes of crossing there are two modes of crossing one is a journal crossing a check is said to be crossed generally when it bears across its face in addition of the words and company or any abbreviation that of between two parallel lines either with or without the words not negotiable means when the two parallel lines are being drawn on the on the top of the check it includes that this is a journal crossing it may be with the with the words and company or with or without the words not negotiable so the two parallel transverse lines simply either with or without the word not negotiable goes for the journal crossing so this is the uh, example of that in first case only two transverse lines are being drawn in second case and company is mentioned in third case and company is mentioned but the way is different of writing the word and as well as the company in second case it was the abbreviation which which was being used and in third case it is the complete words which are being used in fourth case in the two parallel transverse lines this is not negotiable and fifth in uh, it is mentioned not negotiable and company means both type of uh, the words are being used that means the two transverse parallel lines with or without any words means and company and not negotiable makes the checks with the journal crossing so when a check is crossed journally the pair the pay banker shall not pay it other than to a banker means the the check would be paid only to a banker the drawee bank is not to make the payment of the check at the counter because it's a crossed check but the payment is to be made only to another bank who collects the check on the behalf of the holder of the check the holder may get the check collected through some bank only the when the bank is not involved it would not be collected and collecting bank may be any bank of the choice of the holder means the holder may be the true holder holder may be the any finder of the lost check or or anyone else but the uh, the choice of the bank may be the holder holder's choice but it should go by some it, it should go through some bank only second type of crossing is the special crossing special crossing along with the normal crossing gen general crossing it should include the name of the banker to be added on the face of the check either with or without the words of not negotiable here transverse lines are not necessary for a special crossing but the name of the banker is the main important thing to be included special crossing makes the check more safer than a general crossing so in case of special crossing it is a duty of the bank on whom it is drawn to pay it only through the banks are mentioned as in case of general crossing it is uh, it is upon the wish upon the will of the holder of the checks to choose the bank but in case of special crossing the banker is being mentioned so it would be it would be cleared only through the specified bankers mentioned on the check so this is the format of the special crossing one only the name of the bank is being mentioned that is state bank of india in case second case it is uh, it is mentioned in the two transverse parallel lines that is a state bank of india third one is the similar fourth case um, fourth is the sorry third one is the account pay state bank of india that means here we have mentioned the account pay and we have also mentioned the state bank of india and in fourth case like in case of general crossing the words not negotiable are being used and with that not negotiable the name of the banker is also being added that is the state bank of india that means in case of special crossing with the or without the parallel lines without with or without the two parallel transverse lines or without the use of word the not negotiable the crossing is with made the main essential thing which is to be present that is the name of the banker in case of special crossing 
Now we come to payment of checks cross specially more than once. This is a special provision under section 127 that a check cannot be crossed more than one except where the second crossing is a banker as an agent for collection. That means a check can be crossed whether it's a general crossing or it's a cross a special crossing can be done only once but only an, a single exception is there. The second crossing is to be done by a banker for an agent for collection of the check. So next let's discuss the restrictive crossing. This type of crossing has been adopted by commercial and banking usage. It has the effect of restricting the payment in certain ways. In such kind of crossings, the words account pay only or pays account are being added. And this makes the checks non-transferable, which is the exception to others one. That means here the words use, words are being used, account pay only or pays account only are being added to make a check uh, to be the non-transferable. Let's see the format, the specimen of the same. One is the account pay. Second option is the account pay and no negotiable. Third one is State Bank of India account Ramlal. That means here the main important thing is to add the account of the pay. That means the uh, the the person the account the account of the pay to whom the payment is to be made is to be mentioned in the two transferred parallel lines on the face of the check. Now, not negotiable crossing which is being covered under section 130. A check may be crossed with the words not negotiable on it. It makes the check not negotiable which means endorsee will not acquire a title better than that of a endorser. The holder in due course does not get any better title as it was in case of all the other negotiable instruments. Here the holder in due course would not get the better title than the transferer. The, if the transferer had the defective title, the title of the holder in due course will also become defective which is the major uh, difference between all other uh, negotiable instruments than the check. Who can cross a check? It's a very important point. We have read about that the crossing can be done uh, to the check to avoid any kind of loss and for the protection of the owner of the check. But the question is who can cross a check? The first one is the drawer. The person who draws a check, when the drawer issues the check, he can cross the check. He may, uh, he may do the general crossing or he may do some special crossing. The holder of the check. If the check is not crossed, he can cross it generally or specially. Means I, I got the check, it was not, it was a bearer check. So I am the holder of the check, I can cross it if it is worth it if it was not crossed. But if the check is crossed generally, I can make it specially crossed. But if the check is crossed generally or specially, he may add the words not negotiable on the check. Third is the banker, the banker to uh, who is going to make the payment. So if the check is not crossed and sent to bank for the collection, banker can cross the check generally. But if the check is crossed generally already and it is being sent to the bank for the collection, bank can cross the check specially. But if the check was crossed specially already, then uh, to the banker to whom it is crossed, then the banker may again cross it specially to another banker for the collection. As we have read, there is, there is only this case where the check can be crossed twice. So this is all what we have read about the negotiable instrument part 1. So in summary, we let's, let's see what we have read in this lecture. Firstly, we have discussed about the meaning of the negotiable instrument. Meaning of the negotiable instrument say, says that a few features, a few characteristics are available into any instruments may get negotiable. Then we have read about the characteristics, presumptions to the negotiable instruments. Then we have discussed about the types of the negotiable instruments in which we have studied promissory note, bill of exchange and check. There are essential features under section 4 for promissory note under section 5 
for bill of exchange under section 6 of negotiable instrument act 1881 regarding the uh, validity of the checks regarding the validity of promissory note and bill of exchange essential features we have covered and at last we have covered the crossing of checks in which we have read about the general crossing special crossing special uh, restrictive crossing and we have also read about that who are the persons who can make a valid crossing so this is all about the lecture thank you very much